Okay, today I am talking about the one piece of gear that should be in every photographer, videographer, YouTuber's bag. Because without it, we couldn't shoot anything. It's, it's light, I'm talking about a light. And specifically, I'm talking about the Falcon Eyes F7 Pocket Light. This thing's been in my bag the past few months, and it's also been, it's also been lighting up the background of my videos. Those are, those are both F7s back there. And today we're gonna go over why you probably want this or something like it in your bag as well. But hey, before I jump into it, maybe you uh, hit that like button first. Maybe consider subscribing, ring the bell, leave a comment below, do all of the YouTubery. Thanks. Okay, let's jump into the Falcon Eyes F7 Lite. And first, let's look at what all comes in the box because that's actually kind of special. Of course, one of the Falcon Eyes F7 Pocket Light LED RGB panels comes in the box. But with the light itself also comes a diffuser, a silicone diffuser. This guy just pops on there like, yo, and wa bang, bang, boom, boom diffuser. And normally on other lights, they might charge you 15 or 20 bucks just for a diffuser. And this one comes in the box, but it also comes with a silicone grid. We'll dive into kind of what a grid does later, but same thing, it just kind of slides on there and boom, your light is gridded. And it doesn't just come with, with that either. It also comes with a friction arm. They give you a friction arm with the light. So you can mount this on top of your camera into a hot shoe, you have to have a cold shoe to quarter 20, but then you mount that on there, and then this to your light, and bink, friction arm. Same thing, that's usually like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks? I'm sure there's a cheap one out there for like 10 bucks, but still, this comes with a light. It also comes with a cold shoe to quarter 20 mount, so I can just Screw this into the quarter 20 mount on the bottom of the light. Shink, 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 like show. And then boom, that can just slide into the hot shoe on my camera. Again, comes with the light. And then lastly, you know, to uh, keep your light nice, they give you a uh, neoprene bag. Nice touch. I have not used the neoprene bag yet. And all of this you get for $139, which is a smoking deal. Okay, so to the light itself, it is a really well-built light. It's a all metal enclosure. I really appreciate that. Uh, it has 96 RGB LEDs in there. It has 54 white LEDs, 54 yellow, and then 96 RGB lights in there. And then all that is in something that's only 15 millimeters thick. I think it's something like 300, 320 grams, something like that. Very lightweight for what it is. But, uh, but also sturdy, like it's heavy enough that you go, yeah, that's a good light, very well built, but not so heavy that you went, oh geez, that's a brick. Okay, this light weighs in at 331 grams. I think it says 300 grams on the website, but it's for sure 331 grams. And that is similar to a can of LaCroix is 368 grams. It's pretty close. Here we go. This light weighs the same as a can of LaCroix that you've taken two swigs from. <laughs> but in general, this is just a great light to keep in your bag. It is very lightweight. I keep two of them in my bag. I, I use that one and this one when I go anywhere pretty much just because they are so light. And then also in the back of the metal body, there's magnets back here so I can actually stick to metal. So if I was to maybe lift the hood of a car and I was like, thunk, just to light it up and get some cool shots of the engine or something like that. If I was somewhere where conveniently metal was nearby, I'll, I'll admit I don't use the magnets a ton, but it's nice to know that they're there. Also on this metal body, we have a USB-C port at the top that supports quick charging, which is super nice to have. And that is charging up a 3000 milliamp internal battery that normally lasts for about 1.5 hours at full power. I think their website says two hours, but I've gotten an hour and a half consistently at full power. But the thing is, I almost never use this at full power. I'm always at 50%, maybe 60% power. That light right now is at 55% power. And at those power levels, you get significantly more, maybe double the time of the light. So this thing goes on. I record as long as I want, do these videos. It 
it never really goes off unless I forgot to charge it beforehand, like that one video. <laughs> It did go off one time, but that was my fault. Even for Morgan's latest album cover, I used two of these lights. I put them right here next to her, and at about 30%, I was able to light up her face with those two different colors. Not a whole lot of that light spilled onto the backdrop, and, and it was perfect. And at 30%, I would have had hours to shoot. So 100% power is rarely needed, but if you did need it, you'd get about an hour and a half straight usage before the died. Moving around the light on the back here, we have a little one inch OLED display that just kind of gives you the info, it lets you know which mode you're in, lets you know how much power you've got in each mode. And there are three controls on the right side. You have a power button on top that is a power button, but it's also a mode switcher button. Then the next one down is a rocker wheel, which is a rocker wheel, but also when you press it, it's a button. And then the last one is just a wheel. That's for your intensity. I can turn it way up or I can turn it all the way down. So really simple controls on the side, nice little screen on the back that lets you know exactly what's going on with the light at the time. And then right here is actually a little RGB cheat. It's a little cheat code. It gives you all the different numbers for what color you wanna to jump to. And in CCT mode, we are using the 54 white LEDs and 54 yellow LEDs to give us a bi-color of any temperature between 2500 and 9000 Kelvin. So down at 2500K, we are just using the 54 yellow. Then as we move up towards 9000, those whites come on, they get brighter, the yellows get darker and then all the way at the top end at 9,000 Kelvin, we're just using those 54 white LEDs. Then I can push the power button on the side to switch to RGB mode, and now it switches over to those 96 RGB LEDs on the panel. Now in RGB mode on the rear of the screen, I now have hue, saturation, and intensity right there on the side, so I can crank up my intensity, you'll see the intensity go up. I press the rocker as a button to select hue and saturation, and then I can use that rocker to change the hue and saturation. If you're a real techie kind of person, you'll be happy to hear that this light has a CRI or color rendering index of 97, which is which is really good. That basically just means it's super accurate to the actual color that you're saying that you want to see. And then the last mode that they have is their scene effects. And I'll jump into that by pressing the power button to switch my modes. Then, oh geez, oh wow. All right, there's a scene effect. I think that's police lights. Number two is ambulance. I think it's ambulance. That's a that's a firefighter. What's that? Oh, that's lightning. Here's lightning. You want a lightning effect for your video? You'd have to put it further away. But here's a lightning effect for your videos, just from uh, from this light. Wow, that is that is really getting me good. Oh, this one's TV. This one's supposed to make it look like. Maybe you're filming something and you want it to look like someone's watching TV. Does it look like I'm watching TV? <laughs> That's kind of awesome. So lots to play with. I haven't really used those modes. I haven't made made films where I needed to recreate police lights or, or a TV screen or anything like that. But it's nice to know that you have this really tiny thing that you can just kind of stash in somewhere and then get that effect out of it. And just in general, this thing is super impressive. The one thing though that is notably lacking is any sort of app control. A lot of LED panels like this, these small little guys, have an app that hooks up to it so that you can put this in a weird spot, stash it somewhere or mount it somewhere. Maybe it's high or it's taped under a desk or it's taped behind something. And from an app, you can actually control all the settings straight from your phone. And the Falconize F7 does not have that feature, which is kind of a bummer, but I've never had a light that had that feature, so I don't know what I'm missing. Okay, back to the diffuser and the grid, the grid system. Really nice little additions to have here. We're gonna, uh, here first I'll show you just this light. This is just the light. We'll go to see what 50% looks like. That looks pretty good. So this is just the light, bare bulb, no diffusion on it. Uh, take a look at my face. And then this diffuser, just slides on like so, super simple. Same power setting, so you are gonna lose a little bit of light by putting this on there. And and now look at my face. Oh, much softer shadows, not so contrasty, not so harsh here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hold it while I peel it off. Ready? And soft light, saba. Harsh light, soft light, harsh light. <laughs> 
I actually showed it pretty well. And having a diffuser is super important and it's nice that it just comes with the kit. You don't have to buy it extra or have to spend any extra money. And then of course, it also comes with this grid system which is which is also really nice. So let's check out what this thing does to my to my backdrop. Look how wide of a spread that is. If you if you point it at something, it just kind of just kind of lights everything up and then we put this little grid on there and boom. Look at that. Now it's focused it into this little beam on the inside that you can see kind of has like a harsh line to it. So if I was starting to light up this, but I didn't want to get any of that in there, or let's say I was trying to light myself up, but I didn't want to get that in it, a grid is how you do that. So for instance, here's, here's this shot with the grid, and then if I take off the grid, same, same thing, but see how much more light gets back there? It starts hitting, hitting the background. But if I go like this, now it's, now it's, only on me again. And that's that's what a grid does. Now, I'm not using this as my main light, but what I really like to use it for is one, a, a pop of color in these YouTube videos, but also for photography or videography. These are super fun and can be really useful. So for instance, when I made my Insta360 thumbnail, I put this guy like there, did something like that. And then I used both of these lights and I brought, let's kill that. I brought this guy, something like there. That looks pretty cool. RGB mode, let's bring that the yellowy red. And then I can just look at my my monitor and look how cool, look how cool that looks. And boom, that's just two lights on this and I have really cool product photography. I could do this one and maybe, so let's give this like a normal color light. I'll lay it like that. Where's that reflection coming from? Lay it like that. Maybe I'll bring the blue behind it more. Kind of a just a, a rim shot of it. Look how cool that looks. That looks rad. And that's just two lights that are in my backpack at all times. The other really cool thing to do with lights like this is add motion to an otherwise motionless scene. So for instance, here, if I had a video shot like this, I would, I would make sure I was out of it. I know I'm in it right now. But you can move the light over the subject, which actually creates a look of motion. So maybe like something like, ooh. Super cool effect, really cheap lights. The other thing I can do with this also is I can bring in the grid in a situation like this. So maybe I only want the blue light to actually hit the table. So if you kind of see this blue light is kind of spreading out all on the table over here, but I don't want white light hitting it over here. So using the grid, here's without the grid, without the grid, light is just spilling everywhere. I really don't have a lot of control of it. But if I throw that grid on real quick, boom, now, now I can kind of hold it up like this and I'm just gonna turn it down slowly until just the camera gets lit. So I'm off camera like this, just gonna slowly go down and boom, the camera's getting light, but I'm not really I'm not really messing with this table. I like it dark, I like it kind of picking up those blue tones. So there it is off, and then I just slowly bring it down, and boom, look at that. That is sweet looking. So just by picking up two of these lights, getting the included grid and diffuser, I've got a pretty sweet little RGB light kit to do product stuff, to film myself. Yeah, this is the kit that I'm using. I really dig it, I'm really liking it. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below, does the app control matter so much that you wouldn't get this light because it doesn't have app control? I'm curious to see what you guys think about that. And then also curious in general, if you see the benefit of having lights like this in your kit. Because again, you can pick up one of these for $140 or obviously get them both for 280, which sounds like a lot until you see what you can do with them and then you go, Oh, okay. Okay, that's it for me. I'm super curious as to what you guys think about this, so let me know below, and uh, I shall see you soon. <laughs> oh no, I hope I don't have hiccups now.